as we go racing 30 laps. Take your parlay model. And we're green. Down to the inside, Lenny White with the challenge for the lead on Trevor Huddleston. To the inside, Huddleston trying to use a little bit of defense on Lenny White. White and Huddleston, they've done a lot of this type of racing together. They're comfortable around each other, know each other's limits. And they're dicey. Six laps in, 24 laps to go, single file, except for the battle for the lead. Yeah, that's not single file. They are nose to nose now, fender to quarter panel, now door to door. Now what? Now momentum. Momentum. Now we apologize to the rest of the field because on the broadcast, this is the only battle you're seeing right now because it's the best battle on the racetrack. Yeah, this is a good one here between probably the, the two heavy hitters that we've seen so far this year and actually, Malone, the 36 car, looks to be closing. Yep. Now, while they continue to battle, we do have one brewing for fifth. Christian Bazin has caught up to Mike Wyman in the number two. We'll see that battle headed into turn number one right now. Bazin with a high arc through turn number one. You see Wyman as he drifts up. As, uh, you get to see this cat and mouse that takes place here, and each driver needs to figure out what's the most beneficial for their cars. Bazin, he's gonna look like he's gonna jump to the inside here into turn number three. Now he tried this move earlier. It looked like it didn't stick as well. Can he clear Wyman? Not yet. Wyman a little loose out of turn number four, but nothing he couldn't slide too much with. Wyman, the last time we were here, he smacked the wall at the All-Star Showdown. So good to have Mike Wyman back with us. Battle for the lead, continuing on. Lenny White again with a challenge, at least through turns three and four, but he wasn't able to get there. Now, Trevor Huddleston, he's not, not <laughs> familiar with victory lane. But as these two drivers are duking it out, don't look now, third place Parker Malone is starting to close in from behind. We might help ourselves a three-car battle here for the lead, and there it is. Bazin still to the inside, trying to clear Wyman, and now they've both caught up to Cheek in the 62. All these drivers trying to maximize their finish here, get as many points as they can, but this race is starting to wind down. Seven laps to go. This battle rages on, but the battle for the lead is starting to heat back up between the 50 of Trevor Huddleston and the 55 of Lenny White. White all over now the rear bumper of Huddleston. Will Lenny White be able to make an opportunity here with the lap traffic of the 15 of Zimmerman? Huddleston's gonna have to choose his lane right. He goes a little bit wider. A good exit for both drivers so far. All right, now here we go to the line. Battle for the lead, four laps to go. Here we go to the line. White flag is in the air. Final lap of race number one with the Pick Your Part Pro Late Models. Lenny White's gonna make a move to the inside, but can he hold it? No. He's gonna have one more opportunity. Turns three and four. White to the inside. Huddleston carrying the momentum out of turn number four. Trevor Huddleston takes the victory in race number one. The king reigns supreme. The king of Irwindale, the winningest driver in history, picks up another one. Man, that was an intense race. I hope it was good for you fans. Um, I had my boy Will up there keeping me calm, keeping me perfect. Um, man, Lenny, there's just nothing you can say about him. I mean, he drove a perfect race, never touched me once. I mean, that's true talent. Uh, just want to thank all the fans for coming out. I know it's cold. Uh, hopefully put on a good show for you. TSC Alliance, the low pit stop, uh, all my family and friends that came out here to support. All right, make some noise! The winningest driver in Irwindale history, Trevor Huddleston picks up another trophy tonight. Junior Spec Late Models coming to the green.
Uh oh, bumpers already. I told you, you get to learn a lot in these cars. So Charlie Cardi into turn number one got into the back of the one of Shank. There is some damage on the nose of the number six. Sometimes if you damage a nose of these race cars, you might have an overheating issue. Cardi working the outside on Shank. Not a line that you commonly see on the third mile. Cardi's gonna throw it into turn number three and take over the position. That was an impressive move. And Roe is pulling away from the field right now. Yeah, I was gonna say, those dreams might become a reality here soon. The way he's driving, he's pulling away from everyone else. Charlie Cardi in the number six seems to be the guy to beat in this class so far, but he's stuck in third behind Mikey Killen in the second spot in the number two blue car. But this battle from second on back, they're gonna get so occupied with each other that Luckinville has just gotta run clean laps. And as easy as that sounds, I don't, oh, Cardi's sideways out of turn four. Almost put it out. Charlie all over the rear bumper there of Killen. These two having a great battle. And in the background, the number one of Shank, he's just kind of watching to see who's gonna be the first to make a mistake yeah. that he can pounce on. Charlie going wide into one, I'm sorry, into turn number three, and now yeah. makes himself an inside pass for second. All right, we are halfway through the main event. And we got a spinner, turn number two, the yellow number four. So that is a three second lead, and what Roe does not want to see is the yellow flag to fly right now. And there's a the yellow. Here we go, back to the green. So Charlie Cardi in the orange and blue number six started at the rear of the field due to their own doing. He missed a driver's meeting, and when you miss a driver's Ooh. meeting, you go to the back. Now he's working his way forward and trying to get by Luck and Bill for the lead. Now Roe is doing a good job right now managing the six all over in his mirror now. Oh, but oh. Cardi with a big slide out of turn number two. Here comes Shank like you were talking about, now putting the pressure on Cardi. Now that was a big loss in time and track position there for the six. Oh yeah, there's pressure. Now, you know what Roe doesn't want to see? Another caution. <laughs> Another caution. <laughs> and you know what racing like this sometimes produces? Another caution. Through the final two corners, it's going to be first time winner, Roe Luckinbill taking the checkered flag. 15 year old Roe Luckinbill. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, come on, Roe. Oh, man, this kid is 15, man. Look at him. 15 years old. You can't drive home tonight but you could drive this car at over 100 miles an hour here and win your very first race at Irwindale. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Tim. I did drive it home. I did, I did. I'd like to thank my dad. I'd like to thank the mechanics. Bob Brincotti, Tim, you, of course. The, the fans, the car guys, my family, friends, my pets. Yeah. Come on, thanking the pets, right? Make some noise for the pets. I love you, Ro. What a great kid. Go ahead. Now we got uh, another race to run, but I feel good already because I won this one. All right, make some noise. He's going to run the legend race tonight. Go ready, kid. Make some noise. Ro, Luck and Bill, your winner tonight. We get ready to go green. And the trucks are already caught up to the back of the field. Yep. <laughs> I wonder, that might have been a request by the drivers. Like, well, hey, can we do this? No matter what, this is a sight to see all these cars on yeah. this track. Oh yeah, this is a this is beautiful. And we're gonna go three wide for the lead right now. Ooh. Burden out to the lead. Green wants by, but he's gotta get past the 43 of Pannone as well. <laughs> so I'm gonna have Sarah swing over on the back straightaway. Look for the red and yellow truck. You'll see it there. That is the battle for the truck lead. We talked about Jeff Williams. He started in the back of the truck. He's already contending with Vandermorn for the lead in the trucks and add in street stocks. Yep. Now they have caught the tail of the field. That's a 40 of Jerry Tepork. That is not a pass for position, but it's track position. So that still theoretically counts. The 34 of Ferdin under fire from the 28 of Green. Green will take the lead with 24 laps to go. Birthday boy taking the lead as we have one car off the pace. 
and this may bring out the yellow as this car is going to pull up against the wall. That is Jacob Cordero, and caution is out. For those that don't know, we have irwindalespeedway.tv. You never have to miss a racing weekend here at Irwindale. And David Cordero is making up time on that outside line. They didn't like that. No, they did not. <laughs> Getting ready for the restart. Lap number six, 24 laps to go. I mean, look at this. We we could invite the all these other states nearby. Ooh, sideways down the back straightaway and almost into a wall with the 33 of Kenny McCallion. Now that's not how you make a point. No, Kenny. no, no, no. But that is how you make the highlight reel. That was oh, trouble turn number one. Watch out, Vandemoren. As we get ready for the restart, lap number seven, 23 laps to go. Looks like one of our trucks might be having an issue. George Perrette pulled out of the racing line and off of the third mile. He's onto the half mile. So it might be an issue there for the seven. And uh, and Jim is closing in here for a battle for third. And respectfully, I love always talking to Jim. So anytime I get a chat with a microphone or not, Jim's always full of good stories, but also good information. So he is going for the third spot. He's got to get by the 94 of Ryan Harrell. To do so, you make a good point. It's not every day we find people that want to talk to us. True. Maybe that car is going to handle a little bit better. One groove up, but that's going to allow the 26 of Vermillion to the inside, and he'll take third. Yeah, Byers in the 10, Burns in the 53. Now we used to, oh, they, they made that work. Tough truck, <laughs> tough attitude. Curtis Burns, we used to watch racing late models out here yeah. with the same number. <laughs> yeah. All battle for second. The 43 just ahead of them. Panone is just like, oh man, <laughs> here comes some truck. Now here we go. Quintero to the inside. He thought about making a move. And you see Byers is trying to get around Panone. And, and all of this is it was a bit of a hang up there. And these trucks were only gonna have so much patience. Luckily, that, uh, that sorted itself. Uh, Kevin James, the 83. We often see him racing out at Orange Show Speedway. Uh, at least that's where I'm familiar with yeah. seeing him race a lot. But uh, obviously, a contender even here at Irwindale. I want to point out the 94 blue and white. Brian Harrell is having problems. That car is just losing the handle more than halfway through this race. And then he's been struggling to hold on as we have three laps to go. But at a turn number four, four He's coming to take the win in the street stocks, and Jeff Williams in the 28 will take the win in the trucks. Wow, man, Zach Green. Holy cow, dude, this thing was hunting tonight, man. Oh, you just dented the roof. Dude, that was the fastest this car's ever run with you, man. That thing was hunting. Nobody was close. Yeah, man, this thing was on rails, man. I, I, I'm speechless, man. And thanks to my team, my sponsors, for everybody for coming out. Man, it's so good to be back in victory lane. We kept finishing second, and I was getting tired of it, man. And I'm just so glad we're back. Well, this thing was hunting, and it was fast, man. So congratulations to number 28, Zach Green Machine, your winner tonight in the street stock division. But congratulations. All right, over here, the Wooly veteran, Jeff Williams, picks up the win in the pro truck division. Congratulations, Jeff. Hasn't been here all season. Comes on out, grabs a win. Uh-oh, be careful there, man. Too old to be doing that stuff at all. All right, congratulations. Hey, thank you. Um, had the fastest truck all day, fastest thing in the field, actually. We qualified on the pole, and then I uh, wasn't real happy about getting stuck last on the 19th on the start of the race, but uh, it just pissed me off, so I just drove harder and uh, made it all the way back up here to third overall and, and smoked all the rest of the trucks in the class. And uh, this is our 25th win here at Irwindale. And, uh, well, congratulations. Pretty cool. Yeah, no, I didn't realize it until I was the other day. And I was like, oh, it's number 25. That would be a good one. So um, I got to thank my wife. The only crew I got today, just me and my wife, her up there spotting. Uh, I got to thank uh, Ramjet Rear End, CRC Transmissions, and California Tire. And uh, thank you for all your fans coming out. And uh, see you out here again next month. All right, make some noise. Jeff Williams, your pro truck winner. 35 lap main event for these NX Legend cars as the pace car peels off, and we are underway. A 
great qualifying effort by the black 11 of O'Donnell there. He's getting some pressure from Hicks. Now we've got three wide looking. And a battle for the lead. It's going to be a short one. That's the 13 of Chambers taking it away, but Bazin's going to come back to the inside. Pekin, but not able to make a move. Oh boy, look at that. Three wide. Lots of double file action. Plenty of bumper tags. And O'Donnell doing a great job of holding his line. A little bit of bumper tags. Well, uh, all over, looking for a way around the 13 of Chambers. Yep. Now, that was also Webster who went down one lap and a battle for the lead into turn number one. And as these two duke it out, we got the third place runner of Bazin closing in. Side by side for the lead, turn number one, Quella to the inside of Chambers. They, they've got it under Oh, man, ball. this is busy into turn number one right now. <laughs> Chambers getting by the seven of Webster and bringing the whole field along. And this is the thing I was talking about earlier. Into turn number. Yeah, that, that looked weird. That almost looked like the six rode over the front yeah. the rear bumper. So luckily they, they got away with that. It's, it's fun to watch. <laughs> so remember when Hicks and Chug had contact earlier? They're back together. Okay. This is all a battle for third. Oh, trouble behind them. The round goes the 32 of Hadlock. And the caution will fly again on lap 29. Six laps to go, which makes this a Saturday night shootout on our hands. Seven laps to go. Oh, a little contact there into turn number one. Chambers moved up the track. Quella says, sure, you guys do that. And Chambers is going to try to fight back, not lose too many spots, because here comes Shug to the inside. Oh, way to the inside. Out of control, but hanging on to it. I like that little bump drop there from, from Hick. Yeah. Just a reminder, those two have gotten together more than once. Oh, before. contact behind them. Turn number four. 360. Wow. Keep going. I don't even think the flagman knows that that one happened. <laughs> uh, that was a result of, uh, I think, Jim Smith opened up a lane, and Daniel O'Donnell was a little bit too far back to fill it, but tried anyways. <laughs> Chambers ahead of Chad Shug, looking good to take that spot, but Steven Bazin is hoping to make up ground on both of them. Only way to do that is if he also gets ahead of the 13 trouble. Turns three and four. One car around up against the wall. We'll, 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 we'll sort it out later. White flag is out. This is, uh, this is what you call a speed drone yellow. Nathan Quella out to the lead. Looking like he's going to get a victory. Checkered flag for Quella. Holy cow, Tommy Jeffrey. Now, oh, he's climbing on top of the car. Come on, make some noise, Irwindale. Nathan Quella, your winner tonight. Oh, he takes a Kyle Bush bow. Oh, I hear the fiberglass cracking, dude. Nathan, congratulations. Come on, Irwindale, make some noise for this young man. Congratulations on winning tonight. Dude, this car was fast. Hell yeah, it was. Uh, can't thank Ricky Schlick enough. Um, what a car. We were super fast out of the box, made a couple changes, and made it even faster. I'm just so proud of this Ricky Schlick racing team. First and foremost, I want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, without him, I wouldn't be here. Um, my family, of course, this is a crazy and really expensive dream, and they let me live it out. Um, Econoware helps a ton with that. PSC Powder Coating, American Mobile Power Company, Cinema Vehicle Services, Studio Work Rentals, Central Sierra Enterprises, and 24-Hour Restoration Company. And I want to give a shout out to my uh, my grandmother, Cat. She uh, she just got back from the hospital. Love you, Cat. Oh, dude, you're a pro, man. Look at that. Well, hey, let me tell you, your mom and dad are lucky because it's Saturday night and they're teenagers hanging out with them. So racing's pretty good, man. We love it. That's what I always loved about racing with my kids. Tommy Jeff, better than that. There's your winner tonight, Nathan Quilla. So sport cars race the sport cars, stock cars race the stock cars. We'll keep you up to date on who's who.
as they roar into turn number one. Now, we see variations of racing tonight. It is an oval. With a kink, they got a D-shaped front straightaway. Man, you have to be careful with what I orders know. you put words in. All right, let's go to uh, turn number four. Just a heads up, we have a car that might not make it off the racetrack. Now, right Robert now. walks. Now, that car is going to probably bring out a yellow. Or we might just leave it there and not throw the yellow. He painted white just like the wall. It, it's going to be a safer barrier. Here at Irwindale Speedway, we don't have time for your crap. So <laughs> just pull it over and put in the park. Gosh, it. <laughs> IrwindaleSpeedway.tv. We go back to racing lap number two. And yeah, that was good. That was pretty good, huh? Good, yeah. Sarah realized that you probably didn't notice it because you didn't react. 33 laps to go. Robert Rice out to the lead in the stock class. He's going to have some pursuit coming from behind, though. The two of Mikey Killen has been fast in these Enduro cars. He looks to the inside. Battle for the lead. Oh, back straightaway. The six of McIntyre in the 19. They went for a long time trying to crash. Yeah, well, it all started out of turn number two, Wolcott. And the 19 uh, got to the inside of McIntyre. McIntyre did not appreciate that. And uh, I think maybe the SMT data will show that they tried to right hook. <laughs> oh. So the, the silver number nine up front that's making a move right now that is the leader of the sport class. The seven is still in second place in his class. Now we got both of the leaders ahead in their field. Now, we have a potential for a caution on the back straightaway. That is one of the Azelina machines. I believe that's the five of Devin Azelina. Robert Rice in the orange, number seven. The pink, 376. I like how he's like, this isn't my car, but I got to keep the crown. Yeah. So this is one of Cheryl's cars. Ryder Gardner in that car, the pink 76. You see, he goes wide, but there's cars there. There's Prado. Mikey Killen is literally a half a track ahead of this. And that's Mikey Killen, leader of the class that we're watching, Battle for Second. So things can get spread out on this oval track, which I remember the first time they ever did an enduro on this oval track, mm -hmm. back in the old, like, junker. Yeah. Enduro days that you and I were able to race in. Um, oh man, you and I were like, this is this is terrible. This is a terrible idea. And we had ball tires, so we can go fast. <laughs> and Robert's third in points. So so, and they're all separated by just four points. So very tight points battle happening. And Gardner does not want to lose any points to Rice because that'll bump him out of the second place in points. But Rice doesn't want to let Gardner get any points on well, him. Well, they need to figure it out. I'm noticing, I think the 76 might have debris on his front end. That's why he's so close to the back bumper of oh, really? Robert Rice. Oh, Take a look. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah, it's a black bumper. Oh, it's in the way. So Argo right now, who's leading in the Enduro Sport, he needs to be making up ground on the 18 of Osman. If he does that, that means that that 10-point lead, that 10-point deficit is about to get smaller. So Argo is so fast that he is lapping the second place runner in the stock class. Yeah. Once he gets to the number two, which uh, actually, I don't Mikey Killen is gonna close in on this battle for second. We're watching the best group of cars right now with three laps to go. And that is the continued battle for second and throw a sport car in the middle. Because Osman is not part of this battle. And you get, at least he's got the big flag that tells us it's a sport car. Correct. Right. Well, out of turn number four, Rodney Argo will take the victory in the Enduro stock. And in turn number three, out of turn number four, the white number two of Mikey. Mikey crosses the line for another stock class win in the Tucker Tire Enduro. Rodney Argo picks up the big W in the sport division, Rodney. Man, you were hunting tonight. Congratulations. It was some cruise. It was just a cruise out there. <laughs> we got a mess going down down here. It's the big one. Right. There we go. Congratulations. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, thank everybody for coming out tonight. 
Uh, it was just a good sail ride out there. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Who else would you like to thank? Uh, you know, uh, Jason, uh, my good buddy, who I don't know what, what he ran, but uh, he always helps me out, you know, and it's Barry Ration. Uh, my dad, who uh, really puts, you know, everything <laughs> into me, and, and um, I just love him so much. Well, let me tell you, this guy right here raced sprint cars, raced all kinds of stuff. Here he is racing Enduros at Irwindale Speedway and still running. Rodney Argo, the big winner tonight in the sport division. And over here, we got little Mikey. Hey, Mikey, you won, dude. Congratulations. You're winner. Mikey Killian. Congratulations, dude. I'm, I'm really tired. That was, a, that was a heck of a race. I got to thank Jan's Towing, Bam Lefflers, uh, Crestwood Communities, my mom, my dad, for even letting me race. Uh, everyone else, they're just so nice, and they run me so clean, so I really appreciate that. Well, let me tell you, you and your good buddy Ryder have got a hell of a points battle going. First, second. Picked up a couple points tonight. Wow, it's going to be a tight season. Yeah, I think we're, what, like divided by two or something like that, so it's pretty close. Yeah, it's really close. So congratulations, Mikey, picking up a win. This is another one for you, man. It's getting usual to see you here, man. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, there he is. He's out of breath, Tommy Jeffrey. As the pace car peels off, we get ready to go for third 40 laps here at Irwindale. Oh, McNeil with a big slide out of turn number oh, two. Wow. That was a good save. Yeah. He's good at that. He's good at the save. Three wide, front straightaway. Porter on the inside, kind of getting stuck on the inside of Chapman. That allows Anderson to take over the lead in the spec late models. And working on second place is the 19 of Andy Partridge. We're going to go three wide for the lead here with the spec late out of turn number four. Anderson's gonna ha fight hard for this one. You know he wants nothing more than to get back into victory lane. We've seen the aggression from Andrew Porter this year. McNeil obviously is the one looking forward and you mentioned it, a sea of cars, oh yeah. And here comes Porter, three wide for the spec late model lead once again. Nico. Loving what he's seeing in the mirror, but look how packed this front pack is. They are all tight around this half mile. Multi-group track, Irwindale Speedway. This is the kind of racing that they had in mind when they put it together. Tanner Huddleston moving in on the battle. Woo. On the brakes, Anders, or Partridge. Yeah, and <laughs> I don't know how many breaks you get. No. You know? Now, Troy's doing an interesting thing here, and I don't even know if it's by design, but he's following the 44 so closely, kind of committed to following him, but it's not allowing an opening for somebody to make one of those dive bomb moves into the corner and then sweep up. Oh, you oh. see him protect the outside line from Porter. Porter now to the inside in the battle for the lead. Good battle up front for the lead in the spec late models while Nico hopes that it stays in the mirror. All right, so Porter did clear. And Anderson tried to get back to the inside. Montanel continues to lead overall. Going racing again, and I, I love it because right now you have the 43 of Porter and, and we have no doubt that Andrew is like, well, there's a car in front of me, I gotta pass it. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, no, it's still, while he's leading, he still wants to be the one to get the checkered first. As Porter's still trying to get by the 44 of Monginelle, and that is allowing Anderson to get back to the 43. So this battle is Huddleston now to the inside, trying to clear, didn't get there. Andy Partridge was able to carry the momentum and, and keep his car on the outside. And on top of that battle up front, the 43 of Porter slammed the door shut on Monginelle's 44 truck. And there might have been contact with the wall because of it. Well, from what I could gather, it looks like the right... Oh, we got trouble in turn number three. One car up into the wall. It's the number 20 of Barkley. 
The Shea spinning it out and hitting the wall. Back to green. Right at the halfway point, way wide goes Partridge into turn number one. Four wide through the corner, and the 97 is going to make up three positions. And the 19, Partridge, maybe trying to find a soft spot to land. That I car think has he's got, got an, an issue. issue. I yeah. think he has a tire going down. That was a great restart for the 97 truck. Yep. Great restart for him. Tanner Huddleston took advantage of it as well. He moves up to the second in spec late models. He's going to have Anderson do his inside, and Monjanel right now is being told he's got two to his inside. Huddleston showing up in the 50, working his way up into the second spot now. If you're Huddleston right now, you know that you've got a bunch of cars behind you and only one up ahead. You don't want to spend too much time on the black 44 truck of Monjanel because he's necessarily not for position. You also don't want to get to give him too much room because that's where the others can pounce. Tanner's just trying to get that run <laughs> yeah. out of the corner that allows him to pull up ahead of the 44. Oh, but that right there, Monjanel might have opened up enough of a door. Shut the door, says Huddleston. Oh, but Anderson <laughs> was not expecting that slide across his nose. All right. Oh, but McNeil's gonna spin it out. Up high, turn number three. And I'm so glad that Robin Andrews was on full focus mode. McNeil's still trying to get this truck refired. There he goes. 12 laps to go. Wasn't a great restart for Huddleston. Anderson might be able to take advantage, but actually right there, some good drive off for the 50. And opportunity may present itself here because now there are no trucks between the 50 and the 43. Here but, we go. But that caution and that restart did not help Nico. Four laps to go. We got a battle for the second spot. The 98 of Anderson is reeling in the 50 of Huddleston. Tanner Huddleston sees the 98 in the mirror and is trying to run clean laps from here to the finish, side by side. Carter on the inside, Chapman up high. Yeah, these two just can't get away from each other. No. And it, it's good experience for both. And out of turn number four, white flag is in the air. Andrew Porter leading the way in the spec late models. Nico Monjanel is going to have that side-by-side -side battle to the inside of him. So he's going to cross the line maybe three wide. But as they go through turns three and four, he's going to take it to victory lane once again. Andrew Porter wins in the spec late models. And Nico Monjanel wins in the trucks. Oh, and there goes the 97 for a spin. All right. At this point, he earned it. What a showman move. Ladies and gentlemen, Tommy has a saying, if you can't win, put on the best show. Come on, make some noise, Andrew Porter in the house. Holy cow, you got a Grizzly Adams beard going on here, man. Good job, you're, you're too young to remember who that is. <laughs> Yeah, man, honestly, this thing was a rocket ship, and I got to thank thanks to Andy because he gave me one that I slid up. I thought I was clear, and I realized he jumped on the brake, so I got to say thanks to him because that would have been a front clip. But anyway, it was really fun, man. Tight racing. Everyone's so fast in this division. There was literally a tenth and a half dividing the first six people. It was crazy, but honestly, I got to thank my grandpa, Gary. They built an awesome hot rod. I got to thank Jans. I got to thank the Everlast boys over there. Let's go. Um, I got to thank my wife. Um, Ryan, Lindsay, uh, Andy Partridge, Tim for running an awesome track, all the officials. And guys, thank you guys for coming out. Because if you guys weren't in those seats, I couldn't be in this seat. So thank you so much. Come on, Andrew Porter picks up the win in the spec late model. All right, Nico Manganiello over here. Holy cow, picks up the win. Uh, congratulations, Nico. Man, you are running hard. Late models, da da da. So let's get you to the late models. Yeah, I gotta, we're starting on the pole in the late model race, but uh, I gotta thank uh, Grib Offroad, I gotta thank Tim Huddleston, I gotta thank my girlfriend, my dad, my, my whole family, my son Brantley, uh, George, uh, RJ Johnson up, upstairs, and uh, just props to Tanner Huddleston and uh, freaking Andrew Porter, man, they, they drove really hard and uh, we raced really good and really clean.
Super clean, man. Great job. All right, go get ready for the next race. This kid's starting on the pole. Pace car is off. This will be our final half mile racing event. We still got RV figure eights up next. 30 laps. We go oh, green. Oh, this isn't a good start. Hold on. Somehow, some way, the two of Wyman only spun out. So there was a lot to unpack there. Much better. Uh, for half Maybe. Of <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened to Wyman there. So Monjanel's going to have the lead out of turn number two. The 55 and the 50. Those blue cars are going to be marching through. Oh, it is a race to the bottom of the line. Well, Basin was not able to get up to the front. Contact between Joe Nidas and Parker Malone. Everybody uh, fights for the bottom now. They're all running into each other. I know, but Parker, he's pretty good on that bottom too. He's going to protect. Lenny White's going to try to dip underneath. White knows how hard it was to beat Huddleston in the first race. So he's going to do everything he can to not let Huddleston get by. But Malone is trying to play defense on the inside. Malone trying to pinch down Lenny White. Kill that exit from the 55. What does Lenny do? Drives in harder. And it's not going to work out for Trevor. Still got pinned there. Nico Manginel continues his lead up front. Three laps in. Trevor just sliced right there. <laughs> that was a slice. That was. Lenny White looking for the lead out of turn number two. Looks to the inside of the 44 of Manginel. And Lenny White to the, no, no, he is to the lead, but Nico's still fighting back hard on the outside. Huddleston working the inside for second spot. So this time it's going to be Trevor's turn. And there he comes to the outside. Monjanel might not have had, still won it, but might not have had the best truck race <laughs> that of his memory. But man, did that set him up for this great late model run. Whatever he's doing, he's doing it pretty right. right? Yeah, <laughs> he's maintaining that second spot. Now the question is going to be Ooh. on the patient side. And that's, that's what Trevor is probably getting a little frustrated right now. And at, at what point does he make a drastic move? He has a pretty good advantage here headed into turn number three. Anjanel thro <laughs> throws it into the corner, and that's where Huddleston's going to clear. Right there off of four. Good racing. Yeah, that, that's everything you want to see. Hard racing, clean results. So this is the battle for fourth we're watching now. It's Bazin, who's been working on Parker Malone. Man, just about uh, since the start of this race, <laughs> they have been going at it. Bazin's been trying to get to the inside, but again, these cars, if you're able to run that outside line well, which Malone has been able to do, it's really preventing Bazin from being able to do much with him. Oh, and on the bumper. Hang on to it, Parker. I don't know if Parker's gonna like it, but that's about as good probably of a bump and run as you're gonna get that, was, that doesn't wreck somebody. That was perfect picture. Joe Nidus, though, isn't gonna give up the, uh, the attack here. And now, I wonder if Malone's like, well, if we're racing this way, now Wyman's going to be like, what did I do? And ahead of them, battle for third is starting to heat up. Christian Bazin on the move. Yeah, Bazin, we saw him get by a couple of these cars a few laps ago. That was 36 of Malone and Wyman. And here he comes for the third spot on Nico Manjanil. As this battle continues, this is the best battle to watch. An update on the battle for third there, side by side, yeah. to the left of your screen. So Bazin now making the move. Now what happened to set this up was the 44 was very sideways as they went through turn number four last time by. It allowed Bazin to make this move, but white flag is in the air, so a couple of these battles are gonna have to sort themselves out. The one that isn't, is the one for the lead. Lenny White is going to answer the call of Huddleston in race number one to take the win in race number two. 
of the Pick Your Part Pro Late Model main event. Come on, make some noise. Holy cow, Lenny. It was about who got to the front first, and you made some moves, dude. You guys were four wide. So Trevor went through the middle. I'm like, don't do that. Anyway, holy cow, I don't know how you got to the front. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Trevor knows. I know. It's whoever gets there first is going to win between me and him. So, uh, you know, it was a race. It was a race to get there. The first, the first race, I don't know what happened. The, the tranny jumped out of high gear on the start. I was a, he was able to get away from me and clear me, and then the cars are the same speed, so it's like, it, it's just, it's so hard to pass. So um, hats off to him. I'm sure you guys are going to see many, many more good races with me and him, good battles, um, clean battles. Uh, every once in a while, I'll probably get a little aggressive, but, but for the most part, we ran really clean tonight. Uh, I got to thank uh, the, the whole reason and the whole, the, the only way I get here is Apache Rental Groups and Tri-City Towing. Uh, these guys pull together every week, give me an awesome car to race, make sure that uh, I, I got all the essentials and all the tools, all the supplies that I need to be here and, uh, and to battle for wins, so. Well, you're a winner, you're a champion, Lenny White, man. Him and Trevor been boxing it out. They're one for one tonight, dude. Lenny White, congratulations. Thank you, Tim, thank you. Uh, thanks for what you do for us. Uh, thanks for the fans for coming and watching. Uh, it is getting a little wet out here, uh, so hopefully we heated it up for you. You did. You kept the vortex. Dale Waltrip had us going.